In this video, we're going to discuss chemical bonding. Now, early on in the semester, we discussed chemical bonding in a very superficial manner, uh, just establishing that it's necessary for chemical bonds to occur for molecules to be formed. We introduced two different types of chemical bonds. We introduced ionic bonds, which were chemical bonds that are formed between differing electrostatic interactions between positive and negative charges on two atoms, and covalent bonds, which are formed between the sharing of electrons between two atoms, right? So these were the two different types of bonds that we that we mentioned, right? We mentioned that most bonds are are you know really in between these two and are called polar covalent bonds. But uh, we'll get back to that point in, in the next video. But what I really wanted to focus on in this video uh, is just establishing what is a chemical bond really? Because when we you know if we draw a molecule like we draw water or something like that, H two O. You know, what we're doing here and what we're showing here is a model, right? This is how we model the interactions of these different atoms. If you were to look, you know, if you were to get a tiny, tiny, tiny type of microscope that you could view chemical bonds, you wouldn't see a line between two atoms where a bond is formed. No, this is just a model that we use to, to you know, to show how forces interact between atoms and form molecules. So if we take this picture here where we have two molecules are two atoms coming together to form a bond, right? You have your nucleus and you have your electrons. Now, we know that there's different electrostatic forces at play here, right? There's the negative charges from the electrons and the positive charge from the nuclei. So what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with some attractive forces, right? The, electron, the electrons on one atom are going to be attracted to the nuclei from the other atom, right? So this will be an attractive interaction. Right. And you would also get an attraction between the electron cloud on this or the electrons on this atom and the nucleus on this atom. Right. So this will be another attractive force. An attractive electrostatic force. Right. But then you would also have repulsive forces. Right. So these electrons, both being negatively charged, would be repulsive. Right. So these electrons will repulse each other. And also you would have repulsive forces from the nuclei interacting, the positive charges on the nuclei. So you would also get repulsive interactions here. So what's going on with chemical bonds is really an interplay, a balance between all of these different forces between the two atoms that's interacting, these attractive forces between the nuclei and the electrons and the repuls repulsive forces between the two electrons and the two nuclei on each atom, right? So really chemical bonding is just, a, you know, a way of, of just a, a balance. When these forces all become balanced, we say that we have formed a chemical bond, right? So what does that look like? So let's look at this plot here. What I have on the x-axis is the distance between two atoms. Right here, we're looking at a couple different scenarios for two interacting hydrogen atoms. You have the internuclear distance on the x-axis, so the distance between both atoms, and the energy on the y-axis. Now, keep in mind that every molecule, every bond that's formed, they're trying to get in their lowest energy state. They're always trying to minimize their energy. And what you can think about that is, you know, nature is naturally lazy. It's going to do whatever is the lowest energy possible uh, process. Same thing here. This molecule is trying to get into its lowest energy state. So I plotted the energy here in this yellow curve. And we're looking at a few different distances for hydrogen. So let's start here on the far right. So at this point, uh, there's such a large distance between the two hydrogen atoms that there's really no interaction between them. So here we really have no interaction between the two hydrogen atoms. They're so far apart that the electrons and the nuclei don't really have any electrostatic interplay or anything, right? So we're just, just getting no interaction out here because they're so far apart. As they start to get a little bit closer together, they start to, to stabilize a little bit. The energy starts to go down, right? Because some of these charges start to feel their, these attractive forces. They're getting a little bit closer together. So there's a slight interaction here. And the energy actually starts to go down, right? You get a slight decrease in energy, 
from those uh, attractive interactions of the electrons and the nuclei, right? Now, down here at the lowest energy point, so I really want to highlight, you know, this lowest energy point on this curve, right? At that point, that's when we say that a chemical bond has formed between these two atoms, when those forces are balanced, right? So right here, this is the lowest energy configuration, right? The lowest energy uh, length between the two hydrogen atoms. And at that point, all of the attractive forces and repulsive forces are balanced in such a way that the overall bond is the lowest in energy, right? Now you notice that this energy starts to shoot up once you go past this lowest energy point, the energy shoots up. So what's happening there? Well, what's happening there is that the, the atoms are so close together that those repulsive forces start to dominate. So even though there's still, of course, an, an attractive interaction between the opposite um, charges, the repulsive interactions are starting to dominate at this point. So at this point, you get repulsion when you get too close. Right. So you can think about this just as a, a plot of, you know, two atoms coming together and what happens to the energy along the way. At first, you start out at a really, really long distance. There's no interaction. Then you start to get a slight interaction. Some attractive forces lower the energy a little bit. Then you reach that lowest energy state. That's where the bond has formed. And anything after that is repulsion. Right. So whatever that internuclear distance is at the lowest energy configuration, that's what we call a bond length. Right. So whatever that uh, internuclear distance is where you get the lowest possible energy configuration, that's going to be what we call the bond length between these two between these two atoms. Right. So. Um, so, yeah. So even though we had introduced chemical bonds a long, long time ago, uh, this is really the first time we're taking this type of a deep dive into the energy of uh, what drives the chemical bonds. And it's really those electrostatic forces between the two atoms. And, you know, you, you can really see how that energy changes by looking at how it changes with respect to the distance between the two atoms.